Very small and cramped, not too comfortable and bumpy, slow but agile and has amazing off-road potential. All this is about the same mighty little Japanese, Suzuki Jimny. A detailed story about the formation of this SUV is not included in our current tasks, since the introduction to the article would turn out to be the size of a small book. Suffice it to say that the development of a small off-road car that would fit into the K-Class, that is, would fall under the tax incentives in force in Japan, Suzuki took up in the late 60s of the last century. The result of these developments got on the conveyor in 1970, at first it bore the name LJ, Light Jeep, Light Jeep, with a digital index. Well, then there were many names under which the car was sold in various markets, Drover, Santana, JYPSY, Caribbean, Sierra. For example, the second generation of the car is better known to us under the name Samurai. But at home, in Japan, he was always Jimny. There is a version that this name itself appeared as a combination of two words, Jeep and Mini. The third generation Jimny received, depending on the installed engines, factory codes JB23, JB33, JB43, and JB53, was presented at the 1997 Tokyo Motor Show. From its ascetic predecessors, the car inherited a ladder-type frame, solid axles, and part-time all-wheel drive, with a connected front axle and a transfer case with a reduction gear, but instead of leaf springs, springs and levers appeared in the suspension. The body has also undergone major changes, which began to look much more modern and elegant. Both variants with a rigid three-door body and versions with a soft top were produced, they were not officially delivered to Russia. The range of engines included a three-cylinder 62 horsepower 0.7 liter engine this version with the jb23 code was especially popular in japan because it met the requirements of the k-car class but at first the main option was the jb33 with a 1.3 liter inline 4g 13 bb with 80 horsepower but in 2003 it was replaced by a more advanced 85 horsepower m13a with variable valve timing in addition, Jimny JB53S were sold in a number of markets, equipped with a Renault K9K turbo diesel with a capacity of 65, and since 2005, 86 horsepower. Paired with these motors, a 5-speed mechanics worked, and until 2005, the two-pedal versions were equipped with a 4-speed Eisen A174 hydro mechanics, which was replaced by the Eisen TW40E. For 20 years of conveyor life, Jimny has undergone two restylings, in 2005 and 2012, which did not affect any serious structural elements. In addition to the plant in the Japanese city of Iwata, the Jimny was assembled in Spain, at the Santana plant in Linares, Colombia, Bogota, and Brazil, Cataleo. In 2018, the production of Jimny JB was discontinued, and in 2019, the fourth generation of Suzuki's compact SUV entered the market, and the fourth was finally registered in the secondary market. We have already talked about this car and published a material dedicated to the Suzuki Jimny in the Five Reasons section. However, that was three years ago, before a generational change that brought a relatively large number of used Jimnys to the market. We decided to repeat the experiment, since many new details were revealed. As of the summer of 2021, prices for used Jimnys are quite high. Even for cars manufactured in 1998, they ask for 300 to 350,000 rubles, and relatively fresh copies of 2017 to 2018 can be estimated at 1.2 to 1.3 million. So who needs him, this Vasca? Is this tiny car with a lot of shortcomings worth that kind of money? Are these shortcomings compensated for by its merits? Let's see what the owners write about the car. Hate number five, mistakes in the overall score. If you read reviews on the Suzuki Jimny on the internet, then every now and then you come across lines like this, purchased in the maximum configuration, automatic. Sold after three months. The car is very good, if you understand why you take it. I realized this only two months after the purchase. Indeed, Jimny is a very specific car and is far from always suitable for the purposes for which it is bought. 
there is an opinion on the net that Jimny is worth buying as the first car for a young person who has just received a license because it is small and not too powerful, but at the same time there is an all-wheel drive, which means that it will be easier for a beginner in winter. In fact, Jimny, due to its design features, makes quite high demands on driving skills. Therefore, in advertisements for the sale, one can often read, I bought it for my son, but six months later he moved to another one. Frame construction, rigid dependent suspension, and rear-wheel drive as the main driving mode, all this leaves a certain imprint. Further, often Jimny is perceived as a female car. At one time, it was even fashionable, I bought a Cruzac for myself, and for my wife, daughter, mistress, underline as necessary, this very Jimny, since it is like big, only small. And again, this kind of purchase often turns out to be a mistake. I bought it to teach my wife how to drive and at the same time use it for a second purpose. My wife didn't start. My husband bought my wife's boss. Then I had to return it. She couldn't drive it. I bought it for my wife, but my wife never got behind the wheel. Because the car, despite its touching appearance, is inherently not feminine. It drives around the city like a UAZ, jumps on bumps like a goat, on the highway it shakes from the wind, in a word, it's not suitable for the role of the first car for a girl, writes the author of one of the reviews, and he has every reason for this. The Jimny is also not very suitable for the role of a family car due to its more than modest spaciousness. And even young families in which both spouses are fond of outdoor recreation, and this is exactly what the Jimny is quite suitable for, as they add to their composition, they begin to feel that they need an SUV, but in a larger size. And for those who need to regularly carry their elderly parents, Zimnik is simply categorically contraindicated. However, if the car was bought specifically for fishing or hunting trips, it may also turn out to be out of place. For example, if you need to overcome considerable distances to your favorite places, about 1,000 kilometers or more. The first owner drove it from Moscow, but after the first attempt to go fishing with a boat, a motor, and a bunch of other things, he put it in the garage, and then it was bought by me. Further, the car is categorically contraindicated for racers, that is, for all those who perceive the dimensions of the car in front as a signal to overtake and for whom excellent dynamics is a sign of a normal car. For them, both the city and the track will be a complete disappointment. And although the Jimny feels quite good in our urban jungle, acquiring it for purely urban use still means making a serious mistake. My opinion, if you have an off-road slash city ratio, at least 50 to 50, then it makes sense to buy. My ratio is 10 to 90. I missed, one of the former owners writes in his review. And the Jimny owner should also be prepared for the fact that he will encounter manifestations of road rudeness much more often than drivers of larger cars try to show you their dashing, complete disrespect on the roads, especially for some reason from the drivers of the Ziggily. Well, yes, the commandment do not offend the little ones is not observed by all of us. But who is it for then? Firstly, for those who can afford to have a second car in the family, and one of the cars can be used as a weekend car. That's when everything falls into place, to work or on vacation with the family in a more comfortable car in which there is enough space for everyone, but on weekends for mushrooms or fishing just in Jimny. Secondly, as it turned out, Jimny is great for older couples living in rural areas or in suburban villages, in particular, working pensioners. Their modest dynamic performance will not annoy, and there is enough space for two, but the all-weather, all-weather, and low operating costs of the Jimny will do a good job. One of the reviews, which is almost entirely an enthusiastic essay, was written by a lady belonging to this category. And it's written with such a feeling that I just can't help but quote a large excerpt from this Jimny ode, buying this car should be a thoughtful and balanced decision. It won't suit everyone. If you like to drive fast and far, prefer to relax with a big family, where the highways lead, if you buy up half of a supermarket every week and you need to somehow deliver it home, do not buy Jimny. You will not find a common language with him and will become a burden to each other. But if you are attracted by the beauty of untouched nature, wilderness, and unexplored paths, if you like to get away from civilization and people, if hunting and fishing is your everything, then Jimny is just for you. For those who do not like loneliness, 
much is not required, a fellow navigator in the passenger seat and a caravan of the same crazy mud lovers. What else is needed for happiness? And in the city from home to work and back faithful Jim will take you in any way. In fact, there are more options, of course. It is only important that the owner is on the same wavelength with the car. And then the objective advantages of the car will come to the fore, no less objectively existing shortcomings will not become critical, and the romance with the car will be long and happy. It is no coincidence that among the authors of reviews there are enough those who have owned this car for 10 to 15 years, or at least regularly change one Jimny to another, more recent one. Love number 5, Appearance the appearance of the Jimny can hardly be attributed to the masterpieces of automotive design, but let's face it, the car really turned out to be very successful. This is evidenced by at least the fact that the car was produced in an almost unchanged form for 20 years, from 1998 to 2018, and even three years after the generational change that took place, it is still not perceived as a native of the past. Of course, you can't call him handsome. There is no grace or elegance in it. In fact, sometimes at first the Jimny's appearance causes some rejection, especially among men, and it takes some time for this reaction to change. When my father-in-law bought it, I thought, what a eared, it's about the side mirrors, freak. But gradually I fell in love with the unusual and perky appearance. But for women, the appearance of Jimny works flawlessly. Have you ever wondered why puppies, kittens, and very young children evoke approximately the same feelings of tenderness? And it's all about the signs laid down by nature. Big, slightly protruding eyes, a prominent high forehead, a stocky body. In psychology and behavioral science, such signs are called releasers, and the reactions to them are laid down very deeply at the genetic level. And now look at Jimny, large eyes headlights, slightly bulging, a convex forehead of the windshield, a short curvaceous body body. The same releases that cause cuteness at the subconscious level. And the authors of the reviews, and not only those related to the beautiful half of humanity, confess their feelings without much embarrassment, there can be only one impression from this funny animal's boundless, tender, and eternal love at first sight. No one would be surprised to hear this from, as it is fashionable to say now, a glamorous blonde they tend to exaggerate their emotions. But harsh male jeepers also talk about Jimny in the same way, if cars have charisma, then all of it is concentrated in Jimny. Who would have thought that this tiny toy creature, looking like a cute cartoon character, is fraught with the properties and qualities of a real, proper SUV, I fell for this car immediately and irrevocably, and my husband was tormented, everything is just super, this is what, what we need both in terms of capabilities and price. But he's so small. As I said, because of the touching muzzle of Jimny and his diminutiveness, there is an opinion that this is a purely ladies car. But experienced auto ladies are ready to challenge this opinion, the author of one of the articles about Jimny called him beauty bag on wheels. Do not believe him, the person himself does not know what he is writing about. He is never a lady. Hate number four, comfort, climate, soundproofing. It is worth recognizing that comfort is not a strong point of the model. Of course, there are significantly more amenities in Jimny than in an Army UAZ or even a Neva, but nevertheless there are still a lot of complaints. Let's start with the driver's seat. Not everyone succeeds in adapting both to the seats and to the location of the main controls. The steering wheel is thin and is not adjustable for tilt or reach. Owners complain that they almost always have to keep their hands in the 10 to 2 position. This, of course, is correct in terms of control, but not very convenient for long trips in quiet modes. And there is nowhere else to put your hands. The armrest in the door is uncomfortable. The sill of the door is narrow. In warm weather, of course, you can stick your elbow out the open window, but in our climate this is far from always possible. Many complaints about the profile of the seats. They fit someone, and someone complains that their back starts to hurt after a couple of hours. It is interesting that this does not depend much on the dimensions of the driver. A slender and short person may complain that the seat is too narrow, but for a kid weighing over 100 and 190 centimeters tall, it may be quite fit. There are frequent complaints about the inconvenient location of the pedal assemblies, they say, 
if you keep your foot on the gas pedal for a long time, it starts to numb. There are not enough places in the car to store all sorts of little things, except for the glove box, large enough, by the way, and locked with a key from the playful little hands of your own kids, there is only a small shelf next to the clock, under the ashtray. A pack of disposable handkerchiefs is neatly placed there. There is also a small niche between the seats. Near the handbrake, you can just put a box from an audio cassette or a mobile phone there. The top configurations of the last years of production were also equipped with an armrest box, but there is also ridiculously little space in it. Other amenities in Jimny usually include air conditioning, heated front seats, power mirrors, and, well, an archaic media system with a CD drive, which does not read MP3, and a pair of speakers that do not produce the best sound. Complaints about the microclimate regularly come across. For some, the stove does not cope at temperatures below minus 25. For someone, despite the small volume of the cabin, warming up takes too long, almost for half an hour. But complaints about misted windows are much more common. In the rain, the only way to deal with fogging of glasses is to turn on the stove and air conditioner at the same time. In winter, the left leg freezes, and spring and autumn the windows sweat. Heating and ventilation are not finalized, no matter how I played with the heater and the distribution of flows, it seems almost impossible to make the rear side windows fog up. The driver's window fogs up frequently. Well, complaints about not the best soundproofing are quite common. And if the insulation of the engine compartment can be called very decent, you can't hear the engine at a traffic light at all, it feels like a start stop from a BMW, then road noise penetrates the cabin quite freely, soundproofing is practically absent, but it's only noticeable during movement. The main noise is from the wheel arches and poor aerodynamics, it is very noisy when driving through puddles from behind. Well, about some kind of comfort in the second row of seats, it's not worth talking about at all. It simply isn't there. A lot of complaints about running comfort, but this is worth talking about separately. Love number four, city, maneuverability, compactness, visibility. Of course, Jimmy should not be considered a city dweller, and in many ways any urban crossover will give him a hundred points ahead. First of all, this concerns dynamic characteristics. Everyone overtook me at intersections. The main problem is that the car does not drive, but moves. You constantly have to keep 3 to 3.5 thousand revolutions in order to have at least some dynamics. And the motor is weak and not too high torque, only 110 newton meters, and even those it gives out only after spinning up to 5,500 RPM, and many people call the 4-speed automatic thoughtful. In a word, energetic changes and starts from traffic lights are given to Jimny with big problems. However, he can stay in the stream at city speeds quite confidently. On the other hand, excellent visibility, huge side mirrors with virtually no dead zones, one of the owners aptly called them rearview dressing table, small dimensions and excellent maneuverability help to easily find parking spaces. You can put a car in such narrow places where drivers of other small cars don't even think about parking. It very often helps in the city center, turning radius like a supermarket cart. The lightness and dimensions of this car allow you to squeeze into any hole where no one else will pass, even Oka and others like her. Indeed, many note that the dimensions are felt like their own body, and the short length makes it easy to do without parking sensors. Plus, let's not forget that the Jimny is a very real SUV, so climbing a curb is no problem for him. But, of course, Jimny's urban talents are especially pronounced in winter. While we lived in a big city, there was no better car, parking, and driving around yards where the snow was not removed, and a bunch of cars were set up, it was all just entertainment, when all-wheel drive is on, you can easily park and drive out of a snowy parking lot without resorting to a shovel. I often notice the thoughtful and envious looks of the owners of ordinary cars that appear after an expression of joy. About the release of a parking space. It is convenient to move along the snow-covered roads, where the main stream does not run the risk, the car is super around the city. Wherever you need to go, go there. They don't clean the yards, it doesn't matter. Deep snow, as it turned out, is quite a native element for Jimny, and if utilities completely stop cleaning the streets in the city, we will not be upset. 
On all-wheel drive, Zinnick literally gets stuck on the road, perfectly holds turns and leaves traffic lights one of the first, leaving behind the strange skidding managed sports cars and other cars. By the way, it is important that despite the short base Jimny, even in 2WD mode, it is relatively easy to get underway on slippery surfaces and is not inclined to stir in revenge, of course, at reasonable speeds and with careful handling of the gas pedal. And one more note about the operation of Jimny in the city, these cars live here for a very long time, almost forever. And all because the units and parts of the car do not experience in the city even half of the loads that they could get off-road and for which they are actually designed. Hate number three, behavior on the track. That's where the Jimny does not please its owners, so it's on the tracks and long hauls. In this they are absolutely unanimous, both those of them who did not find a common language with the car and those who, in principle, are absolutely satisfied with it. Firstly, the dynamics do not suit you. On the highway, your cruising speed will be 90 km h in a straight line, and you will climb the hill only if you maintain the engine at optimal speeds. There is not enough power on the highway. Overtaking is difficult for me, comma, overtaking a truck traveling at a speed of 80 to 90 is a problem, comma, at a speed of 90 to 100 km h. It is very difficult to overtake. The kickdown works, but there is little sense. Jimmy does not have enough power, and you have to wait a long time for the moment when you can overtake. On the track you can go crazy on it. Having traveled to Jimny, I began to think that the Ziguli is a fast, dynamic car. Secondly, the car has problems with directional stability, a short base, a narrow track and dependent suspension of both axles do their dirty work, and all this is aggravated by the high silhouette, large windage and aerodynamics of a grandmother's chest of drawers. To drive more than 110 kilometers slash h is quite scary, drags the car along the road, and it feels like blowing away with the wind from every oncoming truck. It's really scary to drive above 100, the steering wheel is wadded, I didn't like that the steering wheel is too sensitive and at speeds of 100 and above you need to hold it with both hands it's scary at 130 kilometers per hour it's already scary but it's only on an empty track with good asphalt i squeezed the maximum of 145 kilometers slash h but it's already completely scary and i don't recommend repeating it stability is lost one wrong movement of the steering wheel and Jimny, like many other frame SUVs, is really prone to rollover, and this tendency is reinforced by the narrow track and high center of gravity. The question of not the best aerodynamics is not at all idle. A few words about aerodynamics. It doesn't exist. Well, it doesn't exist at all. When driving at a speed of 90 km h or more in an open area with any direction of the wind blowing at a speed of more than 15 m s the car throws, there is a whistle coming from the locators of the rear view. You drive yourself, listen to music and here you are, hold the steering wheel and align the trajectory of movement, in a word, no rest behind the wheel. Again, many note that Jimny really does not like longitudinal rutting, although this problem is to some extent stopped by installing a steering damper. In addition, it is well known that Shimmy dances on 70 Jimnys. Indeed, the problem of Shimmy, that is, the occurrence of rapid oscillations with a frequency of 4 to 10 Hz on the steering wheels of the vehicle, which leads to unpleasant beating of the steering wheel and possible loss of control due to increasing yaw, is very typical for this model, and methods of dealing with Shimmy are devoted gigabytes of discussions on specialized forums of Suzukovads. But so far we have been discussing the behavior on a smooth track. But on bumpy graders, and even just on broken asphalt, things are even worse. Here you need to keep your eyes open, because on every bump the car will try to leave the trajectory. And driving a Jimny on ice is not very pleasant. Behind the rear wheel drive, the skid develops just instantly, and with the front axle connected, you begin to fully understand what understeer is. Add stiffness to the suspension, which we'll talk about later, a tendency to goat, and a small gas tank that will force you to look for a gas station every 300 to 350 kilometers or carry an extra canister with you, and you will understand why many people write that they prefer not to drive. Distances of more than 200 kilometers and trips of 1,000 are considered a real feat. Love number three, the economics of ownership. 
but none of the reviewers complained that the Jimmy was emptying his pocket and sucking out money, and that he was forced to sell the car due to too much maintenance costs. Yes, the initial purchase price is quite high. It was high even when the third generation Jimny was sold in showrooms, it is relatively high in the secondary market, especially considering the size, comfort level, power and equipment of the model. But the tax is just minimal. Maintenance is not too ruinous either. The authors of the reviews give the following figures, 15,000 kilometers, 7,800 to 11,000 rubles, 30,000 kilometers, 12,200 rubles, 45,000 kilometers, 10,900 rubles. And these are the prices of official services, and after all, Jimny is structurally simple, unpretentious, and not burdened with numerous electronic systems, so many handy and technically literate owners prefer to service it on their own. But this is not at all necessary in the reviews. The owners write that the cost of maintenance, even for officials, is lower than in the case of many mass-produced models. The investments that need to be made after buying a car in the secondary market are not stressful either. When buying a car, small flaws were identified, the rear shock absorber and the transfer case oil seal leaked. Replacing a pair of rear shock absorbers cost 4,000 rubles, a Rizdatka oil seal 3,700 rubles, and then sat down and drove off. One of the most vulnerable and expensive to maintain units of frame SUVs with dependent suspension are the steering knuckles of the front axle. In the case of Suzuki Jimny, the bulkhead of this unit will cost about 6,000 rubles. Another item that is often included in the program bringing a used car to life after buying it in the secondary market is the replacement of spark plugs. Original iridium candles cost about 3,000 rubles per set, but they go 25,000 kilometers. In general, the owners note that spare parts when buying them on their own are not so cheap compared to spare parts for mass models of the same Korean brands, but the need to buy them does not arise very often. Naturally, one of the main items of expenditure in the operation of any car is the cost of fuel. Here, of course, everyone's assessments are different. Someone writes that Zimnik eats 12 liters around the city, or even eats 10 liters in almost any conditions, and that this is a lot and certainly not a little. However, most believe that the Jimny's appetite can be called moderate, that it is 6.5 to 7.5 L slash 100 kilometers on the highway and 8.5 to 9 L slash 100 kilometers in the city in summer, and that it can only increase in winter up to 10 to 11 liters. The track, 700 kilometers covered, two people in the car, average speed 80 to 90 kilometers slash H, consumption came out 6.2 liters per 100 kilometers of track. Even if we consider that Jimny is quite picky about the quality of fuel and it is better to feed it with 95th gasoline, it turns out to be quite tolerable. Well, another factor that should be taken into account is a fairly high residual value. Even those who believe that they bought this car in vain admit in their reviews, the best thing about our Jimny was that it was sold without problems and lost almost nothing. Hate number two, pinned it. And now it's time to talk about the suspension, because it is the suspension's features that seriously complicate the life of the owners of the Suzuki Jimny. A significant disadvantage is a very stiff suspension you feel every bump of more than 30 millimeters with your whole body, but there is confidence that you will not lose anything from the suspension along the road. I looked at the car from below on the lift, this is a kind of mixture of Kamaz and Waz, everything is very monumental, the suspension shakes out the whole soul. To take it purely for the city, in my opinion, is impractical, for the highway even more so, tough. Any holes are felt. On speed bumps I slow down almost to a minimum it shakes decently, a pregnant wife refuses to sit down, especially if the route runs through domestic speed bumps, then you have to drop to 5 km slash h, and even then the back can bounce. And there are such statements in almost every review, even in cases where the review is purely positive and the owners as a whole are more than satisfied with their baby. Yes, the combination of a frame structure, rigid, but very energy intensive, and what else can an SUV of this type have? Suspension and low weight lead to a tendency for the car to gouge on bumps. There is no flat road goat is felt always and everywhere. By the way, 
one more control feature follows from this you need to hold the steering wheel tightly all the time on a bump or a hold that you slip over in a passenger car lightly holding the steering wheel with your little finger on jimmy the steering wheel tends to jump out of your hands comma everyone who rides behind jumps up to ceiling at high speeds and uneven pavement jimmy fully shows his jeep character at times he is a goat and strives to wag his back the driver has to constantly keep him in check and control the process and this is tiring and all this together's shaking on bumps goat the need for constant taxiings turn any long ride on the jimny into some kind of test of willpower and spirit in the summer i drove on it from cameras through Tver to the storitsky district it turns out 250 kilometers one way and cursed everything the road to Tver is a washboard i shook my soul out how do people drive 1,000 kilometers on it? I swore off such trips, now only on Patrick, to hell with savings, you need to love yourself, poor fellow is the one who has to travel hundreds of times a day on uneven roads with pits and potholes. I traveled to Moscow on the M2 from Belgorod and back, I don't want to anymore, my back and neck swear, and I'm only 23. Well, actually, all of the above does not mean that in principle it is impossible to go to Jimny from Moscow to fish on the Kola Peninsula. It is possible, and I know people who regularly do this, and it is on Jimny. But even long-distance journeys do not cause any joy for them, especially if part of the route passes through graders or primers. Love number two, patency. Having reached the destination and having shaken the whole soul of his crew along the way, Jimny can finally get down to the job for which it was intended and show itself in all its glory. Here, for example, is the story of Jimny's owner, who is not too sophisticated in terms of off-roading. The road is getting worse and worse, rainwater pits begin, dirt, broken ruts. Jimny skids and stops, helplessly twirling wheels. The wife, as women are supposed to, panicked, oh, we're all going to die in this puddle, and I forgot my makeup bag, I'll lie dead and unpainted. As for brutal men, I boldly grabbed a cell phone out of my pocket, but there was no connection. It remained only to rely on my own strength. I remembered the manual, switched the machine to the lowest gear, inserted the front axle, and, holding my breath, pressed the gas. Jimka roared with his 85 horsepower motor, twitched a little and Kai K like opera. You should have seen it, a rut is not a rut. Pits are not pits, puddles are not puddles, diving into the water up to the very eyes without stopping in the slightest slip. And so several kilometers. And what miracles the Jimny can do in the hands of an experienced driver. You can't stop it in the mud. Just drown, permeability is the quintessence of this car. It's fantastic for an unprepared car, but with good tires and some handling skills outside of hard surfaces due to low weight and very good geometry. He climbed through the snowdrifts on standard tires, got out of the mud and drove where I would not let Vitara go. Naturally, experienced off-roaders recommend not to forget about the need to reduce tire pressure to 0.4 to 0.5 atmospheres. This increases the contact patch by a factor of 5, and even on standard rubber Jimny turns into a small tank. And if you put something more toothy and capable of self-cleaning, then even more so. Reviewers who are fond of off-road write that in about 90% of cases, reduced pressure is enough to get out of an ambush on their own. Well, for very difficult cases, they have a jeep rack jack, hijack, a shovel, an axe. At the same time, the low weight of the car allows you to get by with a manual winch or equip it with a small electric swan designed for ATVs. And with such a set, it is quite possible to rush into the abyss of off-road adventures even alone. Jimny also copes with extreme terrain perfectly. The absence of large overhangs, a short base and the same low weight allow you to literally fly over bumps and pits that can stop much more powerful professional SUVs. And it is no coincidence that the vast majority of motorsportsmen participating in the European Championship in Jeep Trials, that is, competitions for precision control in extreme terrain, in the junior categories of original and standard prefer Jimny or its predecessor, Suzuki Samurai. Jimny is respected by the participants of the Rainforest Challenge, the most difficult and famous extreme off-road race in the world, held annually in Malaysia. But there they use the almost limitless potential of off-road tuning built into the design of the car. 
As a result, real monsters on huge wheels and with powerful engines, most often borrowed from the older Suzuki models, are cut down for victory in the Malaysian jungle. But for us, this path, alas, is practically booked. The technical regulations tightly close the exit of such monsters on public roads, so they will have to be delivered to the competition venues on a trailer, and this, as you yourself understand, is a completely different situation. But in winter, when snow makes life as difficult as possible for everyone except off-road drivers, Jimmy owners feel like the kings of our destinations, rushing and rushing along the snow rut, and drove where Kruzak sat for about an hour. What is especially pleasant, you skid calmly, you know that no clutch will overheat due to its absence, the clutch, in general, winter is the element of Zimnik. You make your way through a snowy field, collecting a snowdrift of snow in front of you to the upper edge of the hood, the car starts to rest and skid, you turn back 5 to 10 meters and sharply into a snowdrift. You break it and you go confidently further. Miracle Machine and in the forest, the Jimmy driver can enjoy freedom of movement that is not available for much more serious-looking off-road vehicles. The car for the forest is super. The road is not needed, rides between the trees. You still have to try to plant Zimnik. It weighs one ton in total. In winter, my friends and I went hunting that they dug in the forest on Hunter and put him in their own rut. Jimmy without any problems passed, bypassing the rut between the trees. However, a little weight sometimes gets in the way. For example, in snow porridge, the car may not have enough weight to catch on the dense ground, and then it floats up, and even on full drive it goes either sideways or backwards, and in an unknown direction. Again, in the reviews of Jimmy owners, there are constantly stories about how they pulled out other cars that got into a difficult situation. It was necessary to pull out the monodrive public in the winter often and in various ways, and how many Jimka pulled crossovers from ambushes do not count. All relatives, friends, acquaintances call me right away. They know that I will come up with something and help. During the operation, I myself have never been dragged in tow, but I had to. But here you need to understand that Jimny is the strong car, but light. Therefore, when going on a ride, you need to remember that if someone is going to ride an UAZ with you, then there must be at least two of them. A well-settled UAZ Jimny will not budge. Hate number one, capacity. And yet, as they say, size matters. It is this factor that determines many of the bright advantages and no less obvious disadvantages of Jimny. It is not uncommon to hear or read that Jimny is a military off-road vehicle, a vehicle of the Japanese border guards. In fact, this is not entirely true. The third generation Jimny is not in service with the current Japan Self-Defense Forces, although in Japan all cars of this model are supposed to be mobilized. But its transverse dimensions, which the car inherited from its predecessors, were really chosen taking into account the possibility of placing high-speed landing barges in two rows in the holds, and that is why the Jimmy body is so narrow. As a result, owners frankly note that having a large passenger in the front seat can create inconvenience during active steering and gear shifting. The same inconvenience is created by not the largest passenger, but in warm winter clothes. Some even write that they feel normal driving a Jimnik only when there is no one in the right seat. But if, in principle, even a very tall person can somehow get behind the wheel of a Jimny, then the total capacity leaves much to be desired. There is enough space inside for two adults and two children. There is practically no room for luggage. Actually, even with the placement of children in the back seat, certain problems are possible. Even a child will not sit behind a tall driver. When my son was born, I felt a lack of space. If you put the car seat right behind me, then the son rests his feet on my seat. He is very it's uncomfortable. And if you put it on the right back, then it's already uncomfortable for your wife. What can we say about adults? The second row in this car is generally just in case. Well, or if you are a man and you are unlucky with your mother-in-law. Get in like hell and get out like hell. But the most important thing is that with a conditionally four-seater configuration, there is absolutely no room left for carrying luggage. There are two options to choose from either a passenger compartment or a trunk. Trunk. He is not. No further comment. Accordingly, the owners very categorically believe that, in fact, the Jimny is a two-seater car, 
and that it is categorically not suitable for the role of the only vehicle in the family, no matter what anyone says, this car is for two and only for two. If you have a task to go to the country with children, grandmothers and things go on anything, but not on Jimny. Sitting behind an adult is categorically uncomfortable, the size of the trunk is close to zero. But on the other hand, with the backs folded down, you can shove a small elephant into the resulting volume. I don't know what about the elephant, but in many reviews the owners talk about what they managed to transport with the rear row seats folded, or even better, simply dismantled, with the rear seats removed, the entire tourist Schmerdiak is loaded for 10-day autonomous living in tent plus two people and two dachshunds, Zimnik, when installing a box on the roof, includes two men. A 3.7M inflatable boat with a transom, a 15 horsepower Yamaha engine, tents, chairs, a table, tackle, shovels, clothes, booze, barbecue, well, and the little things a tank for a motor with gasoline and a couple of spare canisters. Yes, it was an art to put all this, but after all, it went in and drove to Sega Zero in Karelia and back only 1,400 kilometers, comma, if the rear row of seats folded, you can roam in the local shopping center. But remember, the cornice will not fit. I tried it myself. I solved the problems with the lack of space for any garbage radically. I removed the back seat. And now a lot of garbage fits into the car. With folded rear seats, the trunk takes quite human size. You can already put a decent sized TV or a set of four wheels. It is worth, however, to take care of another problem. The back door of Jimny opens to the side, like a refrigerator, and is fixed only in two positions, closed and wide open. Accordingly, in order to get or put something in the trunk, in a number of situations you have to hold the door with one hand, and with the other, ensure the box packages that strive to fall out. There is no rear rim, no fastening or nets for fixing luggage are provided. When transporting a conventional elephant, well, for example, an inflatable boat or tents, this is not essential, but when traveling to a shopping center, it can be very inconvenient. Love number one, reliability. If you start asking Suzuki Jimny owners what qualities they consider the most important of their cars, then without a doubt the vast majority of them will answer, cross-country ability and reliability. Yes, the Jimny's reliability has not become a common meme, such as Toyota's don't break. Well, the car is not so massive because it is specific. But with reliability, he really has a complete order. For six years of operation, almost nothing was repaired, only maintenance was carried out according to the schedule. For more than five years of operation, there were no complaints about it. For seven years, I honestly drove 54,000 kilometers without breakdowns and incidents. I had a 2003 Jimny, and nothing broke in it, from the word at all. Comma, for three years and 80,000 mileage, I only changed oil, filters, pads, front discs. There were no breakdowns even when operating in the mud, the fourth Jimny, from pre-styling to today. Not a single one has ever broken. Such statements can be quoted literally endlessly. In fact, for five to six years, the new Jimny really does not bother the owners with at least some breakdowns. Of course, if the car was not purposefully killed on extreme off-road conditions and was serviced on time. In the region of 100,000 kilometers, the vacuum drive of the front axle freewheel mechanism may begin to act up. Further, at the turn of 170 to 200,000 kilometers, silent blocks, valve stem seals, drive belts, hub bearings, steering knuckle anthers can make themselves felt. Most likely, there will be a need to replace the intermediate cardan crosses. The timing chain drive practically does not cause trouble up to 250 to 280,000 kilometers, but in general, the 1.3 liter engine nurses up to 500,000 kilometers, taking into account the fact that Jimny is a typical sprinter, and it is rarely driven long distance, the mileage of these cars, as a rule, is not very large, and subcritical mileage values are accumulated over very long years. Plus, all these malfunctions do not appear simultaneously, but at large intervals. For versions with a manual gearbox, the clutch usually does not cause trouble up to 250,000 kilometers if the car has not regularly participated in off-road rides, where the clutch often turns into a consumable. But there are no claims for reliability to the automatic box. 
Moreover, for regular off-road use, experienced owners recommend the automatic version. The clutch cannot be burned due to its absence, and the transmission of torque to the wheels is smoother, which reduces the risk of slipping and digging. Actually, one should not be surprised at such reliability. The car is structurally simple, like a PPSH assault rifle, which, as you know, can be disassembled into only three parts. Hence the reliability. Even the owners of very old devices, the mileage of which at the time of purchase was 150 to 180,000 kilometers, managed to roll another 100,000 without any problems. He is only 15 years old, and he is still far from old age, because Jimmy lives for 30 years, writes the author of one of the reviews. So even buying an old man, released back in 1998, may well be a good purchase. Of course, such an old man will require some investments, but he will also solve the problem of a Sunday trip for mushrooms quite radically. <laughs>